Welcome to How Does That Coin-Operated Phonograph Work, where today we'll explore the Multiplex Coin and Slot Phonograph. Introducing George W. Moore, the Chief Engineer at the Kimball House Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. More importantly, in 1895, Moore invented the multiplex phonograph attachment, a simple mechanism to enable an Edison phonograph to play five different cylinders. Nice. Introducing George Valentine Gress, known as the Lumber King of the South. More importantly, Gress is who Moore sought out to become 50% owner of his newly invented multiplex phonograph attachment. In August of 1895, Moore and Gress traveled to New York to meet with Thomas A. Edison. After two weeks of negotiating, discussing the use of the multiplex phonograph attachment for nickel and slots, there was an agreement for Edison to manufacture the multiplex phonograph attachment. With Gress as president, the Multiplex Phonograph Company received the first sample of the complete perfected Multiplex Phonograph on June 27, 1896. Over the next few years, a sprinkling of advertisements appeared from the Multiplex Phonograph Company in New York newspapers, with little success. Oh dear. In 1897, Edison secured the rights to all foreign business for the multiplex phonograph attachment. In 1898, the Edison United Phonograph Company, Edison's marketing company for outside the United States and Canada, placed an order for 1,000 multiplex coin and slot phonographs. That same year, the multiplex coin and slot phonograph arrived in London, England. Though the original agreement was valued at between five and twenty million dollars, the multiplex coin and slot phonograph was ultimately a commercial failure. Oh well. In 1902, George W. Moore moved on and with partner B.A. Warlick formed B.A. Warlick and Company, a successful metalworking firm in Atlanta. George V. Gress continued his success as the Lumber King of the South and donated the entire Atlanta Zoo at Grant Park and the Cyclorama of the Battle of Atlanta. In 1905, Edison Bell sold the multiplex coin and slot phonograph for 10 pounds, approximately 55 US dollars, and nearly half of what Edison Bell originally paid for them in 1898. Though primarily sold in England, the multiplex coin and slot phonograph was made complete in the United States. and shipped abroad. This is currently the only complete and original multiplex coin and slot phonograph known. The oak case of the multiplex coin and slot phonograph is sturdy and compact with simple ornamentation. Once unlocked, the curved glass lid opens to allow access to the mechanism. Tune selection is displayed behind the glass in the signboard. Tune cards can be easily accessed through an opening on the side of the signboard. The number beside each tune on the signboard corresponds to an indicator number on the mechanism, which corresponds to the cylinder on one of the five rotating mandrels. The coin box and battery can be accessed behind the locked door below. The mechanical foundation of the multiplex coin and slot phonograph is the Edison Class M phonograph, powered by 
two and a half volts DC. The multiplex phonograph attachment completely replaces the top works found on a regular Class M phonograph. It consists of a top works with a rotating carousel containing five gutta percha mandrels. One entire gutta percha mandrel must be removed to change a cylinder on the multiplex coin and slot phonograph. To accommodate cylinders of different lengths, the mandrel can be adjusted to the right or left on the spindle. Operating instructions are displayed behind the glass in the signboard. To select a desired cylinder, the lever is pushed to the left, which rotates the carousel to the next mandrel, changing the indicator to the next number. The Tewksbury coin-operated mechanism for phonographs is what makes this coin slot phonograph work. The Tewksbury repeater moves the carriage to the beginning of the cylinder to start play. It also lowers and raises the carriage and reproducer. Located behind the bottom cabinet door is the component of the Tewksbury mechanism that controls DC current to the motor. The coin, in this case a British penny, makes contact, completing the electrical circuit to the motor and is not ejected until play is complete. Coins are collected in a locked tin cabinet. The Edison automatic reproducer is used for sound production. Sound is transferred to the horn through a set of telescoping tubes. An 18-inch nickel-plated horn fits on the stationary elbow secured to the case. It all starts with the drop of a penny in the coin slot of the multiplex coin and slot phonograph. Before we leave, initially contemplating a larger distribution in the United States, this nickel-sized multiplex phonograph company token advertised the company and the multiplex coin and slot phonograph. Thank you for watching this episode of How Does That Coin-Operated Phonograph Work? Mm -hmm.